Delighted to say we're at Casa del Ritten, home <laughs> of Mr. Lewis Ritten. <laughs> like, oh, that was good. That was, yeah, that's that was it. Good, Thank like you it. so much for inviting us into your home, yeah. my mate. And uh, what a good day to get here. A couple well, of hours after Newcastle, climb out of the relegation yes. zone. Beat your rivals. Well, there you go. So easy work. That was you're happy. I'm happy. So it's it's uh, <laughs> oh, easy work. Right. Not for <laughs> not for Newcastle. It's not. But uh, no, good three-one win and a uh, couple of good signings. So we're we're flying now. Yeah, maybe listen that Kieran Trippy a free kick. That's you some know. Boy, he's come in, he's been he's been uh, he's been good, like so he's cutting material for next season. <laughs> Sorry Lascelles, I know you've been at the gym a few times, but uh you 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 won't come with the captain see we've got Trippy here now, so no, it's all good. What's the feeling like around the city, obviously? Because, uh, you know, Newcastle's very much like Liverpool. Yeah. It eats, sleeps and breathes football. Yeah. Do you kind of sense it today, even like taking the kids out and everything everywhere else? Everyone's got spring in the step. It, it, everywhere just buzzing. Doesn't like doesn't matter where you go. Everyone just seems like COVID and lockdown just seems to be forgetting about now. We're being taken over with the richest club in the world, and you can just sense it everywhere. Like Newcastle's football mad, and uh, it just it's been a mint atmosphere. And hopefully, a few more wins will be safe, and next year will be even better for us. What was it like on the night? I know you're a season ticket holder. What was the atmosphere like last night? Unbelievable, well, oh, but I've been told of my dad, unbelievable, so uh, give the season ticket to my dad at the start, because obviously no. nothing had happened, and uh, now he won't give us it back, so <laughs> I've uh, stuck watching it on the telly last night, and he's, he's in the box, eating the, eating, the, eating the food and drinking the drink, and uh, living it up, so uh, I got to see him this morning at the gym, and um, tell him how good the atmosphere was, and how it was jumping, and I'm just shaking my head, just thinking, I'm rubbing it a little bit more, dad. so yeah. yeah, he's loving it though, but it's just classic. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, last time we saw you, we were up here. Probellum's uh, show up in Sunderland. Atmosphere absolutely rocking. Place was absolutely rammed. Yeah. And did I say we got a bit of a vintage Lewis Ritson performance as well? Yeah, go, go, yeah. But uh, eventually another stoppage has come after four or five of, uh, of performances going to points so or sadly getting beat with the last few. But yeah, we're good. Uh, atmosphere it's always good in the North East, but you'll see an even bigger and better atmosphere at the arena. You yeah. know, like, it's hard, like, you know, me, Joe Lowe's, a few of our big ticket sellers from Newcastle, trying to get people over at Sunderland's a bit more difficult than what people imagine, but 25th of March, they'll be jumping in there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's Kieta, though, he's a good opponent. You know, he was tough, yeah. he was durable. That was the first time he'd been stopped in about 12 years. Yeah, no, he was. He was, uh, he took something. I was even going back in the corner, I was saying to me, damn, my hands are hurting, yeah, I'm hitting them that much sort of thing. He was, uh, he's a tough lad, but... We've got the win in there. Hopefully we can just build on it and maybe get a few more stoppages. Yeah. For me, you're the type of fighter that needs an audience. You need yeah. a crowd there. You know, it, the atmosphere was unbelievable, but when you think back to when you box behind closed doors, and it just seems to take a percentage away from your game. Massively, you know, like, especially when we're a big ticket seller, like for the Robbie Davis fight, we sold over 2,000 tickets to place with my Then you go from that to your next fight where you could hear a pin drop. It was horrible. And uh, it was the first time I've ever even said to me, Dad, I, I don't want to fight tonight. Just don't want to fight. And uh, he couldn't believe it. I've never said that once. You know, I've had 100 amateur fights with me, Dad, 20 odd pro. And, uh, he couldn't believe what he was hearing. So horrible, but atmosphere is back, the crowd's back, and we're going to see the best Lewis Ritson. Yeah, absolutely. Back at the Newcastle Arena, the venue that you know well. Yeah. Um, it's going to be bouncing on March 25th, isn't it? They're going to come out in force. Definitely, you know, like they, they do get behind their own, and there's a few, you know, a few were from uh, from Newcastle, and me, Joe Lowe's, uh big ticket sellers. In the place, just gets behind you, you know, especially with a football, genuine football fan. Everyone knows it, and it's just mad. It's the whole city just seems to get behind you, and just a, bit, a big buzz. Yeah, you have got like Thomas Ward, you got the McCormacks, you've got you know Savannah Marshall now yeah. as well. Do we count? Do we count Troy Williamson? He's a bit dull. He's I guess. a bit down there, but you can't. He's a British champion now, so we're going to count him anyway. We're <laughs> going to count him as one of our own. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, Savannah she's world champion. She's flying the flag on the girls' stage, and um, you know Troy, he's got a British title, major one of the major titles. So we're class. He's done, but we're going to class him as a fellow Jody for this interview. So it makes us <laughs> feel better. So yeah, and they have got the McCormacks. You know they're, they're flying the flag as well, and Tommy Ward, who's you know one or two off a of world title shot. They, the North East boxing scene's on a real buzz at the minute, and even like the Mark Dickinson, who's who's on the show. Yeah. So even last week we saw the big Drago, the big heavyweight. Yes, he Steve, was on. He's out and about as he's well. So about. it sadly didn't go his way, but you know he's on the skies and he's recognised. I'd pay to see that again, though. It, it was, was a great fight, wasn't <laughs> it? To be fair, yeah, it was. Uh, 
It was like a big car park fight, really. Yeah. Two big lads getting stuck into each other. But that's what fans want to see, isn't it? Especially with the big lads. Usually they get a uh, bit of a rep for it being the other way, a bit slow and a bit ponderous. But that was was fast, it was fast paced, wasn't it? So big stable. It's a really good scene at the minute, and you know we just got to keep winning, and likes a problem, and we'll keep coming up and getting the big shows up, yeah. That was always been the the thing, you know. With the northeast always had one or two fighters, but. You know yourself, to sell out an arena, to do a big show, you need an undercard as well, you yeah. need ticket sellers on there. We're here now. Yes, we are. You could easily do a 10 fight card and have Geordies or people from the North East in the whole red corner. Yeah. Well, look at the, this problem we're showing the 25th of March, all North East fighters. You know, there was a stage when Matchroom were coming up and maybe had like me on and uh, top of the bill. You know, we tried it with Josh Kelly from Sunderland. He got booed a little bit, so he, didn't, he never really come back. But you know, like we've had the one main fight, which would be mine, but then match room we've had to sort of shift fight as in to sort of get a bit of buzz and get a bit of get the show sell, sold out where they don't need over this one. Full ten lads from the northeast sell tickets, and the place is going to be jumping. Yeah, it must be amazing to be a, not only a part of that, but be the main event of that. Yeah. You know, when you look down at that undercard, there's three or four lads there that more than likely are going to go on to fight for world titles yeah. themselves. Yeah. So to be at the point of that, like, you know, the crest of that wave, yeah. if you like, must be buzzing for you that your name's on the top yeah, of that poster. No, it's, it, it's good, yeah, but, you know, it's it's a very fickle sport boxing. You know, you've got to keep winning, to keep to keep at the top and, you know, yourself on defeat and you're back doing the bottom of the pile. So, you know, it's good to be there at the minute and hopefully we can just keep winning and stay there. Yeah. Talk to me about your professional journey. You know, when you look back over it now, over the course of your career, you know, you've kind of you've had the highest of highs. You've kind of had the lowest of lows yeah. as well. Um, you've changed trainer. You've yeah. moved around. You're back with your dad now and everything else. Was t has Tatum Pro t turned like kind of panned out the way you imagined it would? Uh, well, yes, I know. You know, when we first turned pro, like we didn't even imagine winning the British title. You know, we just I was working away at the time, sort of sick, and it was Billy Nelson at the time. I had spotted Ricky Burns' names. He just wanted to turn pro, and I just oh yeah, go on then. We'll we'll have a go at it. Then to do what I'd done with the British title and won it in record time and kept it. And like I say, we've had them world final title eliminators and sadly they got stopped. But we want to make our way back there. We, we believe that we're that level and we believe we can bring a world title back to Newcastle. You had that incredible run up lightweight, as you say, picking up the yeah. Lonsdale belt so fast. Where is the belt, by the way? Is it here? Is it's it? actually upstairs in the cupboard, it, yeah? believe it or oh, not. Yeah, it's just. It took me on the mantle, please. I know, as you know, as I gave it to my dad and I, uh, I bought the gaff off my dad and he, and he kept it here, yeah, so uh, it's just been kept in the cupboard. Well, last, I, I tried to put it on the mantle, piece, but it lasted about a week and then it just got <laughs> sailing. Yeah, so uh, it only comes out when people are here and go, can I have a look? And oh, there it is, get it on photo, and that's, that's it done with. So I'm. Uh, Ah, all that work, hey. all, all that, that work, work for nothing for the bottom of my cupboard. So maybe one day she'll she'll let it come out and go in the mantelpiece. But who knows? You, you had that amazing run. You got to a European title. You lost the European title on a split decision. Yeah. But you've never been to lightweight since. And obviously you moved up to light welterweight. The decision was made. But you you were that close to winning the European yeah. title. You were touching distance from yeah. a world title. And I felt like you had to almost rebuild. At light welterweight as a contender yeah. again. Do you regret leaving lightweight so soon? Yeah, we do. Like we had um, obviously my first one was to get the Patera rematch. He sort of priced himself out massively for the rematch, but it was more like of a like I say, got beat on a split decision where I was doing absolutely nothing right for that fight. You know, me and my dad were at sort of ends with each other. I wasn't really training properly, and he kept saying, "You know, uh, this Patera and I, and I've never, but I was, oh, I'll just knock him out." I yeah. just knock them out because I was on that run where I was knocking people out and um, I can remember you come come here. He says, "Oh, come to the house. We're gonna watch Patera. We're gonna watch a couple of these fights with Tapley for the European title." I went, "Yeah," and uh, I was asleep on the set. <laughs> just out for the count <laughs> and uh, fell asleep. He watched the two fights by himself and uh, that, that's where I was with it. You know, I wasn't really. I'm just gonna knock them out. I'll, I had been promised things. You know, you're gonna fight in America. The Luke Campbell fight had even been mentioned back then. If I got past Patera. I'm half saying to me, oh, I'm fighting Luke Campbell next man, didn't worry about it all. Yeah, yeah. And just how, how fast and quick things can turn and change. Yeah. Looking back now, does that motivate you not to fall backwards and not to take your career for granted? Definitely 100%. That's why we, you know, at the time we made the decision to, to go to Hartlepool and, and leave me dad and go with Neil and, uh, you know, train properly and, you know, 
but beat Robbie Davis, the biggest fight in my career so far, won that. Yeah. Best performance. Uh, best yeah. performance as well, well, yes. And uh, you know what? We decided to take it a bit more serious than what we had done, and that's what, we, that's what we've been doing for every fight since. So what? Why, why did the decision come in then to leave Neil and come back with your dad? What was? Well, at the time, no one knew apart from me. Obviously, my partner, uh, my girlfriend, was pregnant again. We were a second little girl, so. Uh, Originally, I was meant to go to Neil's myself and sort of say, look, my me, uh, me partner's pregnant. We're going to go back home. Can I come a few times a week? But then my dad said, oh, I'm going to come with you to make sure that you go to Neil's and don't, not just a phone call where he's a bit old school. My dad yeah. I didn't tell him that well, that's was pregnant. So I was sort of kept under a secret. And uh, obviously, I couldn't tell Neil that. So it was sort of, look, I want to go back home. And can you train us three times a week? And he just went, no, it's me or nothing. Mm. So at the time, it was like, I had to come home and you know, and make the decision to stay with the be pregnant girlfriend. Yeah. Over the course of time being with your dad, how has that relationship changed? Because it must put pressure on that yeah. father-son relationship that you're, he's your dad, but he's also your coach. Yes. He's I know like, you've had that most of your life, but you're a, you're a man yourself now. You've got your own family, you've got yeah. your own kids. Yeah, it was hard because me and my dad are like best mates, you know, like outside the gym. And I think that's what was the half the problem in the, in the, in the, in the, in the gym, where... I would go in for a hard session and go, oh, I'm feeling a bit tired today, Dad, let's do what I, I'll just do a bit shadow boxing where, all right, if you feel a bit tired, you can, where now it's, I don't care if you feel tired or not, yeah. you're doing the session I'm giving you, where beforehand it wasn't, I was sort of, I was sort of dictating what was going on, Yeah. where it should have been the other way around, and we've just fully knocked that on the head now where he's in charge and if I don't like it, there's a draw. Yeah. Was that an actual sit-down conversation where you literally went, right, well, your dad drew a line in the sand and said, come back with me, it's all in or we're not going to bother. Yes, well, yeah, when I had told him, you know, uh, I was going to leave Fano and come back home, sat down on that, in that kitchen table there and just said, look, listen, this is the way it's working. If you don't like what I'm saying, don't bother leaving. Yeah. And, uh, was, uh, you know, my dad's a great coach, you know, he's been, he's been a coach for 30-odd years, so he knows what he's talking about. And uh, I said, right, no problem, and, and we've just took it from there. Yeah. Because there was a spell there where the rumour was you weren't training properly, you were enjoying yourself too yeah. much, you know, you weren't, your, your mind wasn't on the boxing. How true was that, or was that just boxing old no, wives' little, tales? No, you know, like, I was, where I, when I first moved back from Scotland, went with my dad, I went on that run where I was knocking everyone out, I was training like a madman, like really was, couldn't find a harder trainer. And then with each knockout, just seemed to be training less and less and less, and not going to the gym. You know, I had a big power before the terror fight because I wasn't really in the gym and he had texts us saying, go F yourself, you know, like, uh, don't bother coming back. Sort of smooth that over. But it wasn't really training, you know, it was like, you say, enjoying yourself and it went from training hard to, I'll just knock him out, didn't worry. Yeah. Don't, Dad, don't worry about now, I'll just knock him out. Yeah. And, you know, it's, when you go up the levels, it doesn't work like that. Of course. How do you keep your feet on the ground now? Because you are the main event again in your hometown, in Newcastle Arena, you know, it's, once again, you are the poster boy of the events. How do you make sure that you don't, you know, get carried away with it all again? I think you just got to have the right people around you, haven't you? You know, like, at the time, I didn't really have anyone around us apart from me, dad, and I was sort of telling him, listen, I'm doing this, I'm doing that way now. It's completely different. I've got, me, me, obviously, my partner and my two little girls. You've got to stay ground for them, you know, my little girl's got a horse, she's got this, she's got that. She keeps asking for a new one, so <laughs> I need to keep running to make sure I can, you, can, you can afford them things. So, uh, and that's that's how I'm gonna keep grounded at the minute. Just focus on, you know, I want to have give them a good little life, a little nest egg before before they start adult life. So, that's that's I don't think there's anything better that can keep you grounded. Of course, listen, we've met the cat. That's champ. That's big champ. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of the horse? Sunshine. Right. <laughs> yes. So you didn't get the name there. No, I didn't, no. Would have been Marvin Hagler or something <laughs> if I got the name but no. Little Sunshine she's got so Sunshine and Champ, you know which one named Grand I named Little Champ, but uh, not much variation between the names, yeah, but exactly. <laughs> uh, how old are your daughters? Four and five months. Wow. Four. Obviously when you were growing up, you, you lost your mum quite young. Yes. What 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 age was was it when your mum passed away? I was six. Six year old, so mum passed away. Uh, luckily, you know, a man upstairs was, was watching after her and, uh, you know, I found my dad got remarried to a woman who I now classes me mother. She was around there when I was six. Wow. She has been since. So, yeah, it's, we've been lucky the way it's, it's figured out and uh, she's just exactly like my real mum, do you know what I mean? So, she gets called mum, she's happy with that and it's all good. Amazing. Do you, uh, I remember reading something a few years ago that um, 
you'd never been back to your mum's grave. Is that true? Or? That's true, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've been once since the full time just passed. Not for me. Just wow. not my style. Just Is that just like because, you know, you don't believe she's there or she's no, looking I just, down on you? I, I'm, I, if you ask what she doesn't she doesn't think I've got any emotion, you know, like I like to keep it that way. Go there, get a bit of motion crocodile tea has, so just no chance, just stay away from it and you know, I've got a few three sisters, so I let them deal with it. They can go down and yeah. and, uh, and do do what they want to do. So you're literally in a family full of women. You've oh, just got yeah. girls <laughs> everywhere. Oh yeah, too, oh, too many God. of them sorting problems out left, right, and centre. I have a boyfriend's and about this. That's all I go. I tell you, believe me, I've had my little four-year-old. She's a uh, she's got a little boyfriend called Dexter. So. <laughs> I'll see you next day again. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dexter's dad must be creeping around oh, corners yeah, at the school. You know, Big Max, uh, I, Max, he's, he's a good lad. He's uh, <laughs> have a bit laugh about it and stuff. So, no, but um, yeah, it's hard. You know, you still get the phone calls. New office sisters, you know, they're all in their 20s. And my boyfriend's done this, my boyfriend's done that. Can you sort this out? <laughs> I can do about this, but. I'm in yeah, camp here, yeah? Yeah, I'm in camp here. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's life, but. You wouldn't change it for anything. Oh, of course, yeah. Listen, it's a brave young man who messes about with Lewis Ritz and yeah, sister yeah, up here. Believe me, there's, a, there's been a few of them, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't say anything on camera about that too much. But <laughs> no, uh, there's been a few, but you've got to take me around you. There's always the odd knacker out there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Listen, we're closing in on March 25th, but you're the youngest is what, five? how many weeks? Five months. Five months now, yeah. so that's still late nights. It's bottle feeds, it's... All that kind of yeah. stuff is, is that yeah. impacting on your camp at all? Or? No, like I see, well, you know the young and she's, she's seven to the seven in the morning, well, seven at night or seven in the morning. She's doing a full twelve hours, and uh, little Darcy, she, you have to wake her up for school. So wow, I've been very lucky, but she's on uh, bottle duty if she does wake up. And then I'm in camp, man. I'm on <laughs> training tomorrow. Get the bottle ready. So so March twenty sixth, you're knackered. Ah yes, I have. She'll see this now. interview and I'll be laughing. So no. Uh, no, she's, she's, she's a good lass, uh, more lass, and she does all the night feeds and that, so saves me from doing the job. Yeah. How, how's that changed you, becoming a dad? <sighs> Massively. You know, yeah. like, I was a bit of a jack the lad when I first got with, got with my missus, and uh, do you know, went through the daft stage where you're going out every weekend, you know, going to town and fighting and stuff like that, but got with all lass, and, you know, I've got a little family now and couldn't, couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, of course. And Sam hasn't asked me to ask you this, but does that... Is the ring coming next? Is that well? She's engaged. I'm surprised she hasn't asked you because she keeps asking me. I've asked, keep, I've asked them. Sam. I, I When's going, the big day? When, when, the, when, the old, when the younger ones old enough to remember it, so five or six. She'll go, <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? So no, this is a uh, we're engaged and we got engaged um, last Christmas. So we're just waiting till the old ones a little bit big and she can remember it. You know, like yeah. So she can what, carry the ring yes, down. Yes, she can carry the yes, uh, uh, Two girls. That's that's it for me. We've just been saying before. I may have to get the snip at this rate, so I don't want no yeah, more. There's, a, uh, there's another bedroom up there. There's a spare it's bedroom. It's kidding himself. <laughs> kidding yeah. yourself. Oh, don't say that because she'll be listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> she'll be seeing even the interviews. I've seen it. So, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, one day it'll, it'll happen. Listen, let's bring it back to March 25th. Bring it back to the main event. How does the rest of the year pan out? Obviously, arm raised March 25th. Where do we go from there? Because we are now talking about Lewis Ritson. Back in contention for a world yeah. title. Get some Americans over here. Atmosphere at the arena, 10,000. We just want the big fights. And it's starting off the 25th, ex-world champion. Going to be a tough fight, but if we get through him, we can show that we're, we're getting to that level. Yeah, he's tough, he's strong. He's been in with Mikey Garcia. The best of the division below, one of the best. So you know he's going to be game. Yeah. But he, he is only short, but he's you know he's like yeah, a little man mountain, isn't he? So a bit of a powerhouse, isn't he? So yeah. good, good 24 wins, 18 knockouts, something like that. So... He's, he's going to come to win, and you know it's going to say it's his last chance. You know, and, uh, it's our last chance that we get beat to be at that level that we want to be at. Yeah. So it's going to be two lads come to win. I feel like this kind of fight is, you can make this as hard or as easy as you want it to be. I get that feeling. Yes. If you want to stand there and box them, you can do that. Yeah. But if you let the crowd get involved and you get too excited, suddenly we've got a fight of the year contender in our no, hands. I think we'll have, yeah, that's which what, is uh, your career, let's be honest. No, yes, you know, but, uh, and you're right, because that's what. We're a boxer's kid, we've got a boxer's kid, that's what's been the instructions, but you know, I have been able to get in there and like to have a bit of a fight, so I said, oh, well, we'll box for six and we'll get stuck in the last four, but <laughs> <laughs> there's no one's hurt there, so no, we're thinking of a plan, and you know, at, the, at this moment in time, the plan is to box a bit. Yeah, and listen, had that call come in, because you both signed with Pabellum, 
Had they called you about Progray, would you have gone for it? Or? I have gone for it, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, when I was in match room, there was, uh, before the Vasquez, the, the disaster performance against Vasquez, they were lining Progray up for us, so, sadly, I had a very, very off night that night, and uh, I still got the decision, luckily, don't know how, but I got it. Yeah. Uh, and I had even met any messages after, and I even said, look, listen, if Progray's on your mind, just we'll do it, we'll still do it, but... Luckily, he had saved us a little bit and said, no, no, we'll look for somebody else. So, uh, but no, we'll, we'll fight as it end of the game. We'll, uh, we'll fight anybody. That's yeah. no problem. You know, sometimes you do need a bit of a team behind you to say, just hold on a step. You know, maybe a little bit too far at the minute. But it's been a few years since I had Vasquez fighting. I think I'm like a grown in the, the, the super lightweight division a lot more. Yeah. And likes of Pro Green, McKenna's and the Horas and the, the top lads, we want them. Yeah. March 25th, do we see the best ever version of Lewis Ritson? I think we're going to, yeah. Obviously, you're not going to uh, preach too loud just in case it doesn't happen, but no, I'm very confident that uh, we're going to have to have a career best performance with this kid, so that's what we're planning on doing. And we got tickets ringside for Eddie Howe and the boys? And they want them. <laughs> so if you had to walk it out? <laughs> yeah, hey, why not? After that free kick, you can, uh, you can walk us out all right, so Trippy is he's the new hero on, uh, on Tyneside, isn't he? So happy with that, but... Uh, no, listen, you know, keep winning. We'll get that big fight. I'm sure the uh, Newcastle squad might come out one day and support the, support the local lads. So, fingers crossed. Superb. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, mate. Yes, thank you. Lovely. For